why do we pin ourselves at the top? So then we are clearly at the top. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us for our monthly webinar series for Make It Happen Multifamily. Uh, my name is Lee Fjord and Megan Fjord. We're here to help educate as many people as humanly possible about the uh, the benefits of investing in commercial size multifamily real estate properties. Um, yeah, and that's really what we're diving into today. We're getting back to bank six and we're just talking about unlocking passive income and you know investing in multifamily real estate um because that's our bread and butter that's what we do mm -hmm. um and that's you know what we are uh, most uh, suited to talk about so with that being said um let's roll in and uh, formally introduce ourselves again if my slides will work all right who are we uh, we are Green Forest Capital, and we also have an educational platform that we created called Make It Happen Multifamily. Um, we established Green Forest Capital, our syndication company, in 2019. We specialize in 506B and 506C multifamily real estate syndications. We currently have $65 million assets under management, and our educational platform, Make It Happen Multifamily, uh, currently has a membership group of just under 3,000 members. Oh, we're, um, there. we're growing every day. It's been growing and growing. And if you aren't already a member of Make It Happen Multifamily on Facebook, please do join. Or if you know anybody who would be able to gain any you know benefits of learning about investing in multifamily real estate assets, Join the Facebook group. It's a great way to be able to get educated and network with other people. Um, you know, for free. It's literally an open to public group. Mm -hmm. uh, no sign up requirement or anything. Yep, yep. Cool. Share it. Share it if you get value from it. Um, yeah, and uh, we've got some other upcoming events too. We've got uh, tours and pours is going to be on the twenty eighth. Uh, we uh -huh. are uh, going to be doing that one. Uh, one of our own properties. Uh, we're going to be announcing it very soon. We're just lining up the last details on the pours. Yeah. So really excited. Yeah. So next, welcome to the world of passive income. This is what we're all, you know, the goal. The goal is to create as much passive income as humanly possible in order to be able to offset our, you know, cost of living and to be able to make money when you sleep. You Achieve know, that financial freedom. Eventually being able to have enough sources of income to create uh, financial freedom in, uh, through your various passive investments. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, just getting that time freedom is huge and, and playing your cards, right. With your finances, uh, your monthly revenue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, offsetting some of those, you know, getting, getting all of your household expenses covered by your different passive income streams is just so life-changing because like Lee and I, we just went on this trip uh we just went on a ski trip to austria and it For was Megan's incredible birthday. yeah i oh. i literally a month before this thing was like ski trip to austria opportunity doing it yeah. and uh, i was like lee was out of town i was like lee uh just so you know i just booked this a ski trip to austria you're welcome and <laughs> for my birthday <laughs> yeah uh, it's for, for my birthday but you get the benefit so um and we would not have been able to do that if i was still in my day job or if lee was working a w2 job yeah. and you know, we uh, that's one of our biggest reasons that we're in real estate and we really want to make that accessible to everybody, which is why we're so passionate about this. Yeah. Who here has ever played the cash flow game where you're in the rat race until eventually you can create enough sources of passive income or income to then get you out of the rat race? Well, we, through creating enough sources of income uh, outside of our career jobs, are now financially free. Uh, and or have left the rat race. So we can skip. Yep. And then we have somebody in the waiting room. Oh, so what is passive income? Passive income is money earned with you not having to dedicate your time or focus towards that actual thing. You're not trading your time for money any longer. Your money is coming in regardless of whether you <laughs> show up to your glass prison or not. Yeah, right. You show up to your glass prison and you you know, earn your income that way, then, you know, that you are not actually... You it was a glass room. prison? Oh, it's a glass prison. I mean, <laughs> you have windows, but you're stuck there. 
<laughs> you can leave, but hey, uh, you always have to come back. For record, like if you love what you do and you love working, oh yeah, we're all what? about that. Keep doing it. We're just still wanting to help you gain financial freedom through passive income. Like yep. we are all about people who are specialized in what they do and they love their careers. Yep. So, I, um, and I love this photo that is here as an example of what you know, multiple sources of passive income or income look like. Imagine it planting seeds, planting seeds that then eventually sprout into money coming in on a regular basis and you are harvesting that money coming out. So you plant your seeds, plant your money seeds, and then out of those seeds come, you know, potential sources of income in your future. Yeah, Lee, uh, Lee's not in our backyard playing $100 bills. I would I would, no. I would definitely yell you. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't plant uh, plant Russell real money. Probably in take them up. We plant money metaphorically. Yes, yes. All right. So the reason that we love multifamily real estate. So there's lots of different ways. When we're talking about passive income, of course. Like most of you guys are, I mean, all of you guys are familiar with the stock market and like you probably have some money invested with a financial advisor and you know they're trading stocks in order for you to get a dividend which is you know passive for you um and what we do is specifically multifamily real estate and we love it because it's a hard asset uh you know also with real estate you know unlike a single family house where you have one roof and one foundation and hvac and all this stuff for one stream of income which is one tenant's rent in multifamily you've got 100 to 250 or you know plus different units that generate revenue for that company for that apartment complex yep. so if you have a couple people move out your revenue is not going to zero you're still you know you still have other people who are paying the rent um, so that makes it a lot more of a stable asset. So sure. that's one of the things we really love about multifamily is like spreading that risk out over multiple units. Yep. You can do that through the, you know, the multiple streams of income coming in on a larger scale asset, like, you know, not just apartments, but also money coming in from maybe laundry revenue or application fee mm -hmm. income or pet, pet rents or, you know, whatever the case might be, there's lots of different ways to earn money on a larger multifamily real estate deal than just one single tenant's rent that comes in every month. Mm -hmm. It also it gives you the opportunity to take advantage of the economies of scale because the larger property is, the more efficient it should be run. The smaller amount of overall dedicated focus and effort it will take to manage the 100 apartments versus a hundred single family houses. It's just like buying something at Costco or Sam's Club. It's like if you're buying a hundred units, you're gonna get it as a, at a bulk discount. And you know, it's the same type of thing. If you're doing it for a hundred apartment complexes, it's gonna be cheaper. Apartment complexes, but units. Units, yeah. it's gonna be cheaper than doing it for on a residential level for a single family house. So and then there's you know the appreciation aspect, the ability to utilize leverage in order to really maximize that appreciation using third-party property management companies so then you don't have to be in the weeds or in the trenches, you know, making sure that every single little thing happens every single day, all day long, <clears throat> and mitigating risk, you know, through um, having those multiple units. The largest risk that real estate has, in my opinion, is vacancy risk. We have a single-family house, and you have that one tenant move out, you're 100% vacant. On a 100 unit apartment complex, one tenant moves out, you're still 99% occupied. Right, and I really wanna reiterate that uh, professional property management, the, the main reason that we get into 100 plus unit apartment complexes is so that we can afford to properly staff these apartment complexes with full-time maintenance staff, full-time property management. So we actually have a, a real you know, suit of professionals that are on the property 24 seven or, you know, throughout the work week. Uh, so our team can work on, you know, finding new deals and more opportunities for you to invest in, um, you know, while we also manage the property manager, of course. Yep. We are not a single person. You don't just see in these photos, uh, Megan and I alone standing next to the sign of the properties that we bought last year. We have a team, we have many partners, several partners that we work with over and over again on deals. Hey, look, there's Sam. Hey, there's Sam right there. Hey, hey Sam. Sam. <laughs> You're in the middle of the picture. <laughs> so we uh, we love partnering with folks and um, that is what gives us the ability to continue to grow and expand by having partners, not just us. Mm -hmm.
So what would what do we recommend a real estate investor do if they are you know sitting around and have or not sitting around well they have fifty thousand dollars to invest let's just say given a good number well we would recommend investing into a syndication because then you can have that be one seed that you plant that fifty thousand dollars into your garden yeah and to be specific like this is the way that we structure our real estate investments in order to offer a passive opportunity to our investors so that's the beauty of the syndication is you know we have two teams and we'll dive more into how it's structured and everything in a minute but uh, you know, we have two teams here, the, the active membership, which is us and our partners you just saw in that other photo. And we're doing the day in, day out managing. We're doing the running of the business, you know, making sure that everything's going according to plan or making adjustments as needed. Uh, while our passive par partners are really doing more of the upfront funding of the costs for the acquisition, fees, the business plan, things like that. So, but it allows you to own and to a piece of real estate without having to have experience as a landlord or you know a whole bunch of knowledge about home maintenance or renovation or leasing you don't have to have any experience like that you could literally be you know a hairdresser and if you have fifty thousand dollars you can be an owner of real estate in a company with a business plan and stay focused on what you do best cutting hair or <laughs> Whatever it is they, that you do, because right. you trust in retirement. And your partners, us, mm -hmm. to help you with your real estate investment journey. That's right. And you're also not signing on the debt risk either. So there's multiple ways you can, you know, invest in real estate and you could partner with somebody and like buy something jointly. But, you know, uh, this way you're just not exposed to as much of the risk as you would be if you are 100% responsible for the entire asset. Yep. So. Moving on. So this is how a multifamily syndication is structured. So first you have the asset, the actual property up on top, which is then owned by an LLC. The equity of that LLC is split generally in two different piles or stacks. You have the active partners who oversee the day-to-day -day aspects, Megan and myself are an example of that. <clears throat> and then you have the passive partners. Many, many Class A members who provide the equity towards the purchase of the asset. Those equity partners or limited partners receive a passive preferred return, which is a return first received before any of the active partners receive their benefit of the hard work that they and risk that they have taken and put forth towards the asset. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pref return, and then there's a split of equity. Uh, so this is just an overall example of what that might look like. So you'll have two separate, one entity that owns the real estate, two entities that are separately part of that ownership, and then it's divided up in equity thereafter. Yep, yep, yep. And let's go here. So uh, be passive, be a limited partner. What, you know, are some of the benefits of that? Well, Cash flow, of course. We were just talking about the preferred return. What does that mean? Like mm -hmm. Lee said, that means that our limited partners who invest their money get a certain percentage. Most cases, it's eight or above for us. For us, uh, eight percent of a return on your investment before the general partnership team takes any return on investment. Yep. Uh, so you know that you're going to be getting the money first. Um, and then typically we do those distributions once a quarter, Quarterly. once, uh, yep. once the distributions begin, yep. um, appreciation, this is one that I really want to touch on more because we touched on it a little bit, a couple slides back, but one of my favorite parts of large scale commercial multifamily is the way that they're valued. So we can go in and, you know, play with some things in the business because the way that these are valued are based off of their net operating income, which is how much money you bring in minus your expenses before our debt service. Yep. So as long as we can increase income, usually it's by buying an apartment complex that's poorly managed or Under ran by a right, ran by a mom and pop. Uh, you know, they're just trying to keep it 100 percent occupied, so they're keeping rents low. Not taking advantage of other opportunities to create other forms of income, maximizing application fees. We actually just 
increased our application fee at one of our assets that's very stable from $30 to $50. And we were doing, oh, on an annual basis, something like a thousand applications a year. I mean, it's maybe not a thousand. Yeah, it's probably about a thousand, actually. It's a pretty decent sized property. We yeah. Almost a almost 100 applications every single month uh, on that larger property. So that extra $20 times a thousand is an extra $20,000 a year in income that we're getting just simply by changing one little thing, by changing the, the amount that we charge a prospective tenant to apply for an apartment. Right. And that costs us $0 in expense <laughs> to do. So like an example like that is beautiful because that $20,000 a year in revenue that costs us $0 in expenses now has increased the value of our property by whichever cap rate we sell, which mm. I don't want to get into too much of the weeds with the cap rates and stuff, but like our value is increasing every time that we can just increase the amount of net operating income. It's not based off comps, which is a beautiful thing. And that allows us to provide a better investment return than you might see in the stock market. Like, and that's just such an amazing part of it all. Yep. A good factor to even just consider on a very conservative basis is one for 10. For every dollar that you can increase income or decrease in, in expenses, you can increase the value of the asset by ten dollars. So if so, that twenty thousand dollars in additional income coming into that property on an annual basis increases the value of that asset by two hundred plus thousand dollars. That would be if it was at a ten cap, which is very conservative. No. But so at the end of the day. If you can decrease expenses or increase income on a commercial size multifamily property, you increase the value exponentially uh, by 10, by a factor of 10 plus. Yep. And then everybody's happy. All right. So, and then additional things, tax savings. So as an investor in real estate, you're an investor in property and property has its own special tax benefits. So, you know, with an investment like this as a limited partnership, you are an owner of a hard asset in real estate. So you also get to participate in that. So what happens is we we do some strategies in, in the purchase of our properties in order to accelerate our depreciation, um, you know, which is a paper loss that we get to claim as real estate investors. Yep. Uh, and that is shared with all our investors through a K-1. A K-1 will have a loss. Uh, and then an investor can give that to their accountant and see how that applies to their specific tax situation. So always, of course, talk to your specific CPA or accountant in order to know how that K-1 loss would affect you in potentially reducing your income that's taxable every year. Yep. And then you get to receive cash flow distributions generally on a quarterly basis while simultaneously continuing to do what you do best, whether that's being a hairdresser or being a lawyer or being a whatever Professional dog walker. Yeah. You can do whatever you do best <laughs> and still continue investing in real estate. That's right. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about our investment pro process and what we do as green forest capital in order to, you know, find these deals, uh, do our vetting and then, you know, partner with uh, our limited partners and get all the way through uh, to the end of our, our business strategy. Yep. So what we do is first we identify specific assets in great markets that we then focus on by creating relationships with brokers mostly in order to create a steady flow of opportunities that come to us that we then under put through a very detailed underwriting process as well as on-site visits that happen before we submit offers. Once offers are accepted, then we have a process of contract negotiation where we finalize the contract. Then we move into due diligence. Due diligence is when we go on site, we inspect every single unit. We open up the hood and look underneath and you know check the oil and make sure that the property is exactly what we estimated for it to be, especially when it comes to things like deferred maintenance, the actual physical occupancy, Financial, you know, numbers are or financial investigation is part of that process as well. Is does the income match what we expected? Are the expenses uh, where we expected them to be? Right. Typically, what we do as well is uh, our business approach. You know, we we've conducted us and our team have conducted lots of market research in order to know exactly where we want to invest and in the exact type of asset class, age, number of units, things like that that we want to invest in. So. 
Um, we always look for a value add opportunity as well. So typically that in, includes some renovations, some improvements to, you know, some deteriorated things around the property. So that due diligence process also includes us. You know, we usually have, we do have our third party property management company chosen by the time we do this. Mm -hmm. They're on site walking the property. And then we have, you know, 20 to 40 different contractors on site getting us quotes for the different jobs that we want to do. Uh, so we can really dial in our prices uh, and just know that the business plan is going to work. So, um, and then, yeah, close. then we close and then we're managing the property. And then when we're managing the property, you know, we're, we're keeping an eye on the financials. Wow. We're, you know, managing the construction process on our general partnership team. We have a construction manager. We have a KPI manager. We have asset managers. We have uh, investor relations. We have marketing managers. Mm -hmm. We have all these different partners who contribute in order to make sure that we're really maximizing, you know, hey, our apartment's getting out there our, our, so people can rent them. Like, is the construction going well? We have someone on site uh, or is responsible for visiting the property sure. on a regular basis uh, to make sure that these, you know, assets in the business run smooth run smoothly yep. holding um, weekly meetings and staying constantly in touch with the on-site team making sure that the process and the business plan is being executed to our uh specifications mm -hmm. and then we also focus while we're doing that process on maximizing the income and decreasing expenses so we can optimize your overall returns on the asset increasing cash flow and increasing the overall value of the asset, just like we described. Right. And then of course we have an investor relations team as well. <clears throat> and we uh, are regularly communicating with our limited partners to let them know, Hey, what's going on at the asset? How far are we into our business plan? Uh, what are rents and occupancy looking like? And just uh, going through and keeping them involved along the way in the process. Yep. So what do we look to purchase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is specifically our buy box for where, what type, what we're looking at. 100 to 300 unit garden style apartment complexes. Garden style means usually it's a two to three story walk up with breezeways. So we're not dealing with any interior hallways or having to hire cleaning crews or, you know, deal with, you know, drifters or anybody trying to camp out in our hallways or you know stuff like that nothing more frustrating than owning a property that has that common area interior hallway that you then have to pay some cleaning person to come in because the tenants don't clean the hallways or the stairwells on the inside once you walk in a door until they get to their apartment you're responsible for maintaining all of that common area space so we generally try to buy garden style properties that have no common area space that we then have to hire third party people to maintain yeah. and clean. Literally the landscaper just blows off the sidewalk and that's literally yeah. how it takes. And no elevators either, no mm -hmm. maintaining elevators. So we like pitched roofs, um, you know, water runs off of them rather than collecting in them. Yeah. Uh, we also like 1980s or newer assets. Um, you know, there's just a lot of improvements and properties there that help a lot uh, to reduce maintenance expenses. So uh, locations that we look at, we look a lot in the Midwest and in the South. Yeah, central core, core of the United States. We are located in Missouri and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. That's where we cut our teeth and got started. But since then we've acquired assets in Missouri, uh, not only Missouri, but also in Arkansas and Georgia that we've syndicated and other states as well that we partnered on for JV deals. But we love Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. So a regional area that we cover, and we love those certain cities and certain submarkets in those states as well. Um, historically, we have purchased properties in that five to thirty-five million dollar range, and we'll continue to do so. And the targeted returns that we focus on for our investors on the investor side, if this doesn't, if a certain property doesn't meet those metrics, we don't offer a price that would be below that or a metric that would be below or a property that wouldn't provide those returns, we wouldn't acquire it. So it's 8% and 20% average annual return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, just to highlight this too, like... <laughs> There's, you know, not really many opportunities for, you know, someone who isn't a real estate professional to be an owner of an of a $5 million asset. Yeah. 
or a $30 million asset. But that's exactly what this is. It gives you an opportunity to be an owner of that. All right. So ongoing support and partnering for success. Our, you know, our ongoing investor support is critical. We want to stay in touch with our investors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the reason why we do these monthly webinars is we have investors who attend the webinars, watch the webinars, and we utilize this to be able to stay in touch with them, not only about their specific property that they invested in, which we do send out monthly newsletters, and usually monthly, some are quarterly. Uh, and then we also utilize this as well to be able to do it. Yep. Yeah, and you know, this is just reiterating what you talked about. We love doing our investor relations and staying in touch with folks as we uh, continue our our business plan and just let you know, like, hey, you know, what's going on with the assets performance and you know what to expect. So, mm -hmm. and then exiting the sale. So if we lost so Joe, how to get when back. we look to sell a property, we I like to say that it is um, so that we have two different ways. Partners hands to be able to deploy onto future investments, however they so choose. Option B is to also execute a refinance or a reposition of the, the asset where we would then distribute said capital to the investors. And usually in those cases, investors still stay participants and owners on the deal thereafter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a deal uh, that we've you know been in for several years now, which has a refinance strategy that will return the investors capital midway through. Yep. Um, so that's one way that we exit the capital, at least to the limited partners, if we're not even exiting the real estate at that point. Yep. It's like a, you know, an opportunity to be able to then take that money off the table tax-free through a capital event or a refinance mm -hmm. and then deploy that money into something else, keep the property and continue to let it cash flow as well as appreciate over another period of time thereafter, usually mm -hmm. you know, five plus years. Yeah. So then we typically we typically own assets for three to five years. Now, we have some exceptions to that. Um, but if there's market influences or we've executed the business plan really well, then we might sell early or, uh, you know, make that decision. We actually did that on one of our assets last year, uh, it was supposed to be a three to five year old. And we ended up selling it after two years because we yeah. already achieved the the numbers that we were looking at. And no. Uh, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was taught uh, that you make decisions with a calculator, not a calendar. You don't just say, well, I'm going to sell in December of 2026, you know, guaranteed for sure. That's when we're going to do it because you never know when either somebody's going to come in early and give you an offer that you certainly can't refuse or when you know, you aren't prepared to be able to do that, or you find that you can take further opportunity of the asset by keeping it longer, in which time you turn to your investors and you say, hey guys, would you like to keep it or would you like to sell it or would you like to get out? Well, in that case, you make a final decision and you either keep it, you sell it, or you allow some investors to exit at some point during that process. So like, those are determined by market conditions, the performance of the assets so far, and of course, the investors' objectives. Do they want to stay in? Do they want to sell? What do they want to do? Will we you know, get together, take a vote? Everybody raises their hand. Yes, no, maybe. And uh, we go from there. Yeah, and we'd be remiss to not mention, too, that we also take all these different options into consideration whenever we do our underwriting and our due diligence. Yep. Uh, and part of the reason we specifically like to use agency fixed rate non-recourse debt mm -hmm. is so that we can not have so much variability in, you know, or be, you know, having to be forced into a sale at certain times because of market conditions that were unpredictable. So, yep. uh, and we usually write in some, you know, room there as well. So if we need to sell early or if we need to hang on for a year or so, we're typically okay as far as our financing goes. We prefer Fannie Mae large balance loans because those are the easiest ones to assume. And they also have the longest period of, uh, generally you can place them for between five and 10 years. And assumable debt is a beautiful thing because we can still sell the property and not have to pay a prepayment penalty, yield maintenance, 
uh, on that debt. So you don't have to pay that if you can have a buyer that can assume your debt. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it, the financing can also be a really great benefit to a potential buyer. So. Oh, yeah. We have one that is fixed at 3.48% for the next, uh, well, for a total of 10 years. You would, you a buyer would love to assume that loan. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about our, um, you know, partnering with our limited partners and how that works. So typically we want to establish in a relationship, uh, establish a relationship with any person who wants to become an limited partner with Green Forest Capital. Um, Ahead of time. We right. Want to do in that advance. Now where we can create that connection relationship. You understand the process. You understand who we are. We understand you and we understand your investment objectives. So we can make sure that those two things are in alignment before we have an opportunity to bring you to potentially invest in because, you know, there's a lot of comfort that is needed ahead of time. And the best way to do that is let's get in touch now or early in order to be able to know whether those align, you know? Right. Yeah. And on top of that, syndications are something that are you know, regulated by the SEC. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are certain requirements in, that we have to have as far as our relationship with you, depending on the deal that we do. So, mm -hmm. you know, there is it. There's certain restrictions on being a limited partner based off of you know income or other factors, which is you know being an accredited investor or a non-accredited investor. Yep. However, as long as we have an existing relationship with you. It doesn't matter if you're accredited or not. We could potentially have you invest in our deals that are 506B syndication deals. Yep. So that's just even more of a reason why, hey, like, hey, if you're not making 200 grand a year, you don't have a million dollars in net worth, you can still invest in real estate. But we've got to jump on the phone, jump on a Zoom, align on your investment interests, get to know each other, make sure that this is a good fit and yep. that you know what to expect. Um, and then hopefully you're, you know, a partner with us for years because we are looking to form long-term partnerships with our limited partners, mm -hmm. really hoping to, um, you know, over deliver and have repeat investors time after time. We have a defined process for making sure that that established, uh, pre-existing relationship is in place before we bring any 506B syndicated deals to any of our investors. So we have to make sure we have that relationship in place ahead of time and that it is properly documented. It's a very simple three call process. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes per call. Yep. So, and then we've got our uh, diversification. So the last thing we want our any investor to feel like is that they should have all of their eggs in one basket, no matter what it is. That is certainly not anything you or me or anyone, in my opinion, should ever do. It's just like, put it all on black. Like it's all in apartments or it's all in Bitcoin or it's a whatever, or some sort of vari variance in, in the middle there. So d properly diversifying your overall investment portfolio is our objective. And we want you to see this is only one small piece of your overall all arching investment portfolio. So diversify your investments, but you should include multifamily real estate syndications in it as long as you feel comfortable with it and feel that it's a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, we will provide opportunities that allow you to diversify within multifamily real estate, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why we operate regionally. That's why we have uh, apartments in different states and in different markets. So, you know, if one market tanks, then we're still okay in other areas yep. uh you know it really helps to you know stabilize our portfolio and our risk as well so um you know passing that on to our investors uh you know we have a lot of folks who are like hey should i've got a million dollars should i just put half a million here in this deal and you know sure but at the same time like if you're a first-time investor with us or you know you're new to the multifamily game you might want to you know think about putting that in three or four deals, spreading that out, you know? Yeah. Uh, so you can just diversify within the asset class. You could always just take that million dollars and go buy one single apartment complex in Sandusky, Ohio. <laughs> and then guess what happens when the brake pad factory closes? <laughs> 
you are literally underwater. You lost everything and it's completely gone. So you yeah. don't want to do that. Just like you don't want to put every dollar into one single investment, whether that's stocks, bonds, real estate, or anything along those lines. Yeah. Because investments, all investments have risks. Yep. Yeah. You know, even multifamily, like we've talked about, you know, vacancy risk, yep. you know, all, all businesses have risks and that's part of the reason you invest. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So this is our track record of success uh, in the last year since 2019. Uh, these are all of the deals, large scale multifamily properties that we have uh, taken on. So our very first property was a 38 unit here in St. Louis that we bought in 2019. That project resulted in a 250% return on invested capital over a 33 month period. It was very, uh, an amazing wide, you know, amazing opportunity. We, you know, bought, spent a ton of time, sweat, blood, blood, sweat, tears, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, that literally taught us what to do and how to execute this. And then we've had uh, several other projects, what, seven more since then. And one, our most recent one was a 144 unit, 100% townhouse complex that we recently purchased in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're really happy about that property. We just closed on it, um, what, five, Fall. four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we are doing a complete transition on that property. It is going to be night and day different than what it was. So as we have progressed from that first 38 unit to now, now a 144 unit in Atlanta, Georgia. We have continued to grow and learn new lessons. Uh, you always learn something new. Uh, sometimes it's good, good new, and sometimes it's painful new. Uh, <laughs> but we have learned new, good, and or painful lessons on every single one of these projects. And we bring a piece of that, that education with us to all of our future <laughs> investments as well to be able to uh, and bring that breadth of knowledge to our investor team, our investor partners yeah. uh, on future projects as well. Yes. And we'll continue to do, continue to learn and grow along the way. Yeah, it's iterative. And every single time you do it, you know, you get a little bit better and better. So we're, uh, we're uh, actively looking for new opportunities and uh, look to take down a couple in 2024. Um, yeah. So what's the oh, next step? Excuse me. The next step is to uh, get in touch, establish that substantive relationship, go through the process, the three phone call process with uh, myself or Megan to be able to then have the opportunity to potentially invest in some of our future opportunities. If we don't have that relationship built and it happens to be a 506B opportunity, then you won't even be informed about it. It is something that we can't even market to anyone who we don't have the relationship built with. Right. Uh, you know, whether you are or are not accredited, we want that relationship established ahead of time. So scan the QR code, uh, book a quick call. We can, you know, just get to know each other. And uh, that's the very first step is just get to know each other. And then we take it from there. Yeah, and it's all no obligation. Like, you know, booking a phone call just to establish a relationship, you don't even, you don't ever have to invest. Yeah. Uh, it's no obligation whatsoever. It's, it's mainly just so we can get to know you and no, get to know your investment goals and see if it's a good fit. Yep. And if you want to learn more without feeling like you have to, um, you know, book a call or feel like you're under the gun, go to our website, greenforestcapital.com. Uh, explore more there. And if you find that you're comfortable with it or want to book a call, you can do it from that, our website as well. And uh, you can continue to uh, learn for, from us and with us, along with our other, you know, almost 3,000 members at the Make It Happen Multifamily Facebook page, as well as Lee Fjord uh, YouTube channel, or it's essentially it's the Make It Happen, Happen Multifamily. But it's, you know, if you search for me or make it up a multifamily, you'll find the previous recordings from our other webinars, as well as videos that we have curated from our various live events. If you happen to be in the city of St. Louis or visiting, we would love to be and, you know, 
or live here uh, and want to attend a live event, we do a monthly live event, usually on the fourth Thursday of every month called Tours and Tours, where we tour properties and we learn about them while on site with the owners mm -hmm. and then network with tons of people. Okay. We have awesome sponsors uh, that we'd love to introduce you to and um, just network and, and grow together as a team. That's right. So yes, our next event is on the 28th. <clears throat> uh, we are gonna be actually touring where we are right now. This property in eight unit that we actually uh, live in. Uh, we won't it's be touring our own ultimate house. Ultimate house pack. Uh, but it is, so we live in a, uh, an eight unit that has a four bedroom house that we live in, a three bedroom townhouse, a two bedroom townhouse, a one bedroom apartment and four studios. The studios are a mix of Airbnb and travel nurses. And that's kind of be the main focus for our discussion on the 28th at 6 p.m. Central here in Kimswick, Missouri, is to be able to show uh, that business plan of house hacking an eight unit. And how we bought it. You and know, how we bought it, what we've done to it since, what kind of debt we use. We bought it with a cold call to directly to the owner. Hey, okay, sorry, we're telling too much. Chef. All right, yeah, so if you're able to attend, we'd love to have you at our Tours and Pours event on the 28th. Uh, and if not virtually here each month for our Make It Happen multifamily live webinars. Um, Do we have any questions from anybody? Yeah. No, no questions? Any questions. Oh, all right. Well, we really appreciate everyone, you know, jumping in and attending and learning uh, alongside us. And uh, please reach out, schedule your appointment uh, to book a call with me with the QR code. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon, evening, day, whatever time it is when you're watching this video. And thank have a you. Great evening. Yeah, thank you so much for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. It's great to see everybody. Thanks, everyone. All right. See you next month. Bye. All right. Let's kill this recording. It's underneath the thing. Oh, it's hiding. There we go. Mm.